discuss another subject no the reinforced concrete design and this could be probably our part one okay so before proceeding uh, please don't forget not to subscribe to my youtube channel so that you can be updated for my future videos no regarding this subject reinforced concrete design okay so to start with we have now this uh, an introduction no, to this uh, bending theory in which a beam or a slab is referred to as a flexural member or just simply member okay and actually this uh, bending theory was first developed by Galileo and was later modified by a person named Euler okay and we have now this another uh, definition for this uh, bending theory along the span of a flexural member bending causes normal stresses okay and which are maximum tensile stresses at one surface and maximum compressive stresses at the op opposite surface okay and for this the location of the maximum stresses no it could be either tensile or these are compressive stresses no depends on the span no, of the flexural member and second is on the loading condition okay so we have here another one no, for this bending theory a flexural member or its portion subject to positive moments develop a concave shape no during bending and when subject to negative moments develop a convex shape no during bending okay so for this uh, concave one so probably your your structure no, will look like this no okay this is the concave shape no and then the load is applied no on top of the member and uh, this member will experience no sagging okay so this is the shape for this uh, concave shape and for this convex probably it is the opposite no this one so this is for the concave no and this is for the convex shape okay So an example of this is we have now this simple uh, figure one to just to illustrate this one. So here we have a uniformly distributed load no applied on a simply supported beam and this will experience no sagging and having this concave shape okay and its uh, stresses will then be look like this no we have now this uh, triangular no uh, stresses and then on top of this uh, member we have now this uh, negative FC referring now to to the compression no? of this member on top of the flexural member and at the bottom here we have now this uh, plus F sub T okay referring now to such a uh, member or concrete uh, experiencing this uh, tension or tensile stresses okay and we have probably the neutral axis now here so take note uh, if the said flexural member is a uh, regular is in regular shape so you can actually determine its neutral axis which is probably no at the center no of the said member okay so proceeding a cantilever flexural member subjected to uniform load experiences a negative moment and it hugs and develops a convex shape okay so this is uh, very relevant now to this uh, cantilever beam in which uh, if we apply a uniformly distributed load on top of the said cantilever beam so this would be now its form now no as indicated by these broken lines no so this one will experience uh, hugging no 
in which the top surface of the flexural member experiences also a uh, tensile stress no or intention and at the bottom of the said the member experiences a uh, compression or compressive uh, stresses okay so its neutral axis is uh, normally located no here and this will, this would be now its uh, stress diagram no for the said uh, cantilever beam in which this is referring now to to a uh, concrete experiencing a uh, compressive stresses or in compression denoted by this negative fc and at the bottom is a uh, positive ft no referring that this member experiences no at this point of your uh, flexural member experiences this tensile stresses or intention okay so also here no the top fibers here uh, experiences no this uh, tensile or will expand and at the bottom here uh, will get compressed no? and the maximum tensile stress is developed at the top and reduces towards the neutral axis no take note that this tensile stresses no uh, reduces no towards the neutral axis or as it reaches the neutral axis okay so most probably here uh, the main longitudinal reinforcement no is provided no at the top of this cantilever beam here because uh, as we know that this steel is good in resisting tensile forces or stresses so that is why some uh, longitudinal reinforcement is uh, put here no to to resist those uh, tensile stresses okay and proceeding we have now this uncracked concrete stage okay so when you say uncrack you have to remember class that uh, your concrete didn't experience no uh, cracking or cracks okay meaning your modulus of rupture no denoted by this fr your modulus of rupture which is denoted by this of rupture is not being exceeded okay so take note of this one okay so that is why this concrete uh, didn't experience crack or cracking but if ever that your modulus of rupture denoted by this fr or is already exceeded so that's the time that your concrete will experience cracking but as of this case uh, since it is uncracked so if r is not yet exceeded okay so we have here if r is not yet exceeded no so that is why this is called uncracked concrete no so we have now this flexural member no and we consider this part of your flexural member no as in compression okay and at the bottom here is and tension okay so we have now this strain diagram no for for this one so take note uh, we have this strain no denoted by this no so this is actually like this no subscript c also this one okay for uncracked concrete take note of this one this one is in compression so that is why its strain is denoted by this strain subscript c and also for this bottom part no of your flexural member which is in tension so still uh, your strain is denoted by this strain subscript c referring now to the concrete okay and for these three bars here 
so this this is now its uh, location no? in this uh, strain diagram so this is just denoted by this strain subscript s now referring now to the steel okay these three steels okay so that is why stress uh, strain subscript s for still in tension okay so as for the stresses here so again uh, on top of this one this is now the fc in compression meaning this is now the compressive stresses now here in compression and on the bottom of this flexure on member take note that it is f sub t okay this is f subscript t referring now that this is a tensile stress no in concrete referring to the concrete no that this concrete experiences this tensile forces no at the bottom of this flexural member so it is denoted by this f sub t meaning t is intention experienced by this concrete but here fc this is fc because this c is referring now that uh, your concrete uh, experiences uh, compression or compressive stress okay and this is ft since your concrete experiences a uh, tension no? that is why f sub t and for our steel here so you are going to use this fs over your n so this is the stresses and strain diagram for this uncracked concrete and take note when it is uncracked meaning your modulus of rupture if r is not yet exceeded okay so proceeding so we have now this concrete crack okay from the previous slide it is uncracked concrete but this time it is a concrete crack meaning the concrete already experiencing crack or cracking and we call this one as the elastic stresses stage okay as you can see in this figure number four no so as the load here okay we may write uh here no the loadings especially if uh we are going to 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 put some loadings here okay on top okay so we just have to draw no here if we put some loadings here okay on top of this flexural member example so we may write it here no okay okay so we're done with this uh, uniformly distributed load so as the load is increased no after the modulus of rupture of the concrete is exceeded why is it that i'm saying that it is exceeded because the concrete already experiences this crack or cracking so meaning your if r no the modulus of rupture is already exceeded okay that is why that is why this one experiences this crack or cracking okay so here the cracks no begin as if r is already exceeded the crack here as you can see these cracks here okay the cracks here no begin to form and when the tensile stress no since it is at the bottom no of the flexural member and at the bottom part this one will experience a tension and on top of this a flexural member is in compression so that's why i'm saying that when the tensile stress no in the bottom of the beam equals the modulus of rupture this is called now the this is now called the cracking moment okay this is our cracking 
moment okay so when the crack begins to form no when the crack begins to form meaning the tensile stress no the tensile stress no at the bottom of this flexural member is just equal no equal the modulus of rupture take note when your tensile stress at the bottom of the member okay is equal to the cracking moment MCR so meaning crack no cracks will begin to form okay so when your tensile stress no at the bottom of this member is equal now to the cracking moment so the crack or cracks no begin to form okay and as the load is further increased no as this uniformly distributed load further increase or is further increase these cracks no these cracks no these cracks will move forward no these cracks will move forward and spread up to the neutral axis okay okay and the neutral axis begins to move forward no so example this is our neutral axis no here example this is our neutral axis no so this this crack no as the uniformly distributed load is increased this presence of crack or cracks here uh, will spread up now to the neutral axis okay and this neutral axis no will move okay and this neutral axis will move forward no will move forward or going up no and the cracks occur at those places along the beam where the actual moment is greater than the cracking moment so as you can see in this a moment diagram here okay so probably the actual moment is the maximum actual moment is probably located here no denoted by your m sub a okay where your m sub a is already exceeded the uh, MCR so that is why there's now a presence of this crack no or cracks at the bottom of this flexural member okay and now that the bottom no here now that the bottom has cracked another stage is present because the concrete no the concrete in the crack zone obviously cannot resist this tensile stresses here and the steel must do it no this steel here so this steel will help no in resisting the tensile stresses at the bottom of your concrete no and this stage will continue as long as the compression no here as long as the compression stress in the top fiber no is less than about one half of the concrete compressive strength of fc prime so take note of that okay so this stage will continue as long as the compression stress no so we may write it here no since this is our compression stress no the fc your fc is less than one half of your fc prime so Okay, so this will just continue until such, no, that your FC, which is our compression stresses, no, here, is less than one half of your FC prime. So that's the time that uh, this, that this neutral axis, no, denoted by this one, by this line, will stop to move forward, no. Okay. So I hope it's uh, clear now, no? 
regarding with this uh, figure 4 and as you can see here you can see in this figure not below this uh, moment diagram in this stage the compressive stress no here vary linearly with the distance as you can see it here okay from the neutral axis or a straight line so it's probably our neutral axis is located here okay okay this is our neutral axis okay and this straight line stress strain variation no? normally occurs in reinforced concrete beams under normal service uh, conditions because at those loads stresses are generally less than 0 0.5 of your fc prime okay so this is just only applicable no when this load no the load no is normally less than 0 0.50 of your fc prime okay so proceeding now so here in the figure no figure 5 this ultimate strength stage no in which we have now this uh, beam failure uh, referring this uh, ultimate uh, strength stage so as you can see in our figure 5a here so as the load no here on top of this flexural member is increased further so that the compressive strength no or the compressive stresses are greater than 0 0.50 of your fc prime the tensile cracks here at the bottom of your uh, flexural member no move further upward no it will move further upward there as does the neutral axis no so if you put here the neutral axis again sample this is our neutral axis so this will uh, move no because uh, this tensile cracks move further upward so does the neutral axis also will move okay and the compressive stresses begin to change no change appreciably from a straight line okay so for this initial discussion, it is assumed that the reinforcing bar here, this one, these bars here, have already yielded, no? If we have now this uh, beam failure considering this ultimate strength stage, no? So we are considering the reinforcing bars have yielded, okay? So this would be now our uh, strain diagram and the stress diagram. So as you can see, as the neutral axis no, uh, will move no, because this uh, tensile flux uh, moves farther upward, so probably your neutral axis also will move, will move up. So this would be now our strain diagram for the said flexural member. No, it uh, it also move upward no. So we have now this uh, strain Y here. Uh, this one is referring now the to the reinforcing bar that already yielded no that already yielded this strain y and also this is now our strain no for the concrete and this is the now our angle theta okay so this angle theta is probably equal now to this angle theta is equal now to your strain over your y okay so that would be now the the formula in getting this angle theta no at some distance no y at some distance y from the neutral axis of the beam and it is just equal now to the strain over the y okay and as for the stresses so take note uh we are using now this f subscript y no uh, since uh, this reinforcing bars already have yielded, no, so we denote this one as this F subscript Y, not the F subscript S, no. 
So take note also that the stress distribution distribution here is no longer a straight line or linear, no. It is somewhat already a parabolic, no. So this would be now our com concrete compressive stress. And as you can see in the moment curvature diagram here. So the first stage here is uh, small moments, no less than the cracking moment. This is our cracking moment. And a small moments less than this cracking moment, MCR, where the entire beam projection is available, no, to resist bending. And in this range, no, here, this range here, the strains are so small, and the diagram is nearly vertical, as you can see it here, and very close to a straight line. Okay. And when the moment is increased beyond the cracking moment, meaning if this is our cracking moment and it exceeded, no this cracking moment the slope of the curve no will decrease a little because the beam is not quite as stiff no as the first stage no this is very stiff so as you can see it is a uh, not quite a stiff no a uh, slope here compared to the first stage okay and the diagram will follow almost a straight line from MCR to the point where the reinforcing is stressed to its yield point. So this is now its yield point here, no? From here, okay? So this will just continue until this uh, yield point, no? Until the still yield, no? Until this point. So when your uh, actual moment exceeded this cracking moment, so this is our approximate service or working load range, no? As you can see in the second stage, no? Okay. So as you can see, no, in this uh, range, no, which is our uh, third stage after the this is now our steel yield point. So after the steel yields, the beam has a very little additional moment capacity, no? So this is our point where the steel already yielded and this is our moment uh, yield moment no here so as you can see it here no only a small additional load is required to substantially increase rotation as well as to the deflection no and the slope of this diagram is almost a very flat no it's almost a very flat as you can see it here until the failure point here no okay so meaning your your uh, steel already yielded no in this uh, third stage and your beam or flexural member already experienced now this failure or this beam beam failure okay okay so proceeding now So we have now this bending stress no and cracking moment formulas. So the maximum bending stress occurs at the top and bottom fibers no due to those uh, load and we have now this uh, formula for the bending stress F is equal now to MY over your gross moment of inertia and for the cracking moment so we have also now this formula denoted by this M subscript CR equal now to fr or this modulus of rupture over the gross moment of inertia over your y subscript t okay and your uh, modulus of rupture fr is just equal now to this formula no and you can see this one in our ncp code 2015 which is in megapascal and its formula is 0 0.7 times lambda times this square root of your fc prime okay so we also have now this uh legends no regarding this uh for this value of your lambda is just one for normal weight concrete and is less than one for lightweight concrete and for this m mcr fr the ij and this y sub t we have now this a uh, simple uh definition no, of f the bending stress at a distance y from the neutral axis and if as the modulus of rupture and then we also have uh, this following uh, symbols no so until the 
distance from the centroidal axis of the section to its extreme fiber intention. Take note, no? Meaning this y subscript t is the distance, no? From the neutral axis to the to its extreme fiber intention, no? So, from the neutral axis to the tension side of the flexural member. Okay, so... Uh, now we are going to proceed to our sample problem no? so that you can fully understand the application of this bending theory, this bending stress, and this cracking moments regarding our subject reinforced concrete design. Okay? So we have this problem number one. No? Assuming the concrete is uncracked. Compute the bending stresses in the extreme fibers of the beam in the figure 1. For a bending moment of 33.9 kN, the normal weight concrete has this Fc prime equal to 27.6 MPa. The modulus of rupture, no, Fr, is just equal now to 0 0.7 lambda square root of Fc prime in MPa. Determine the cracking moment of the section. So, here's now our figure number one, having this uh, dimension here. We have these three 10 mm diameter bars. The, the width is 305 millimeters, and the depth is 460 millimeters. And we need to find you know, the cracking moment of this uh, beam section. So, from the given, we have this B, which is equal to 305 mm no? here. And then, we also have now our H, which is equal now to 460 mm. And we have this moment, no? given moment, bending moment of 33.90 kN meter. And we also have now this Fc prime of 27.6 megapascal. Okay. And if we are going to calculate now this modulus of rupture, so we are just going to use this formula no? of 0 0.7 lambda square root of Fc prime. Okay. So first, before we arrive to this cracking moment of the section, we need to calculate first the uh, gross moment of inertia and this uh, modulus of rupture FR. Okay, so we have now this uh, formula for the gross moment of inertia for this uh, rectangular section. No? So which is equal now to one over twelve times your B times the cube of your H. No, and then substituting now our B, which is a uh, three hundred five mm, and our H, which is a four hundred sixty mm. So, we have now this. Uh, we use this 0 0.305 now since we are going to use the unit of a uh, meter. Okay. So, this is 0 0.305 meter and then this is 0.46 meter. So, we can get this uh, gross moment of inertia which is equal now to 0 0.002474 m raised now to the fourth. Okay, so after that one, we need to calculate the modulus of rupture if R, no, which is just equal to this 0.7. And our lambda for this normal weight concrete is just simply equal now to 1, no, as per NECP code. Lambda is 1 for normal weight concrete and is less than 1 for lightweight concrete. So we are using now this 1.0 since we are using normal weight concrete so we can get the value of our modulus of rupture if r equal now to 3.68 mega pascal okay so after that one we are going now to calculate the bending stress no as as far as you can still remember no our bending stress f is just equal now to your moment times your y over this gross moment of your gross moment of inertia okay so m is given which is 33.90 kilonewton meter and our y as you can see here no actually if we are uh, considering no 
the uncracked concrete, no? If you are going to consider the uncracked concrete, so your location of the neutral axis is just simply equal now to the depth over 2, which is in this case, no? Which is in this case equal to 230 millimeter, no? So this is for 60 divided by 2, so probably it is 230 millimeter, no? From the extreme bottom extreme fiber of this rectangular beam, okay? If we are going to consider a concrete which is uncracked, no? So you just have to divide the the depth now of your rectangular beam by two, and you can locate the neutral axis then. Okay. So in this case, for 60 divided by two is 230. So we are going to use this one here, no? And we have calculated this gross moment of inertia, so we can directly substitute, no? M is 33.9 as given, and our MY is our Y rather is just equal now to 230 millimeter or 0.23 meter and our gross moment of inertia as calculated is this 0 0.002474 cube uh, m to the fourth okay so probably if you are going to to calculate now our bending stress f so it is just equal now to 3.15 mega pascal so do not be confused no with the unit because you, the unit of your moment is kilonewton meter and then you multiply this one with meter and then here is m to the fourth so this would be now equal now to the m squared no since this would be eliminated so the unit now is kilonewton per meter squared no kilonewton per meter squared but we are using no this unit of megapascal for our bending stress so you need have to to divide no the result of this of this one by 1000 because uh, the result of this is just in uh, kilopascal no in kilopascal or kilonewton per square meter and you need to divide that one by 1000 to get the value of your megapascal okay so that is 3.15 megapascal okay so as you can see it here we have now this very important note no that the bending stress no f here is 3.15 and it is less than the tensile strength or the modulus of rupture of the concrete fr which is 3.68 megapascal meaning this is an indication that the section is assumed no, not to have cracked or didn't experience this crack or cracking. Okay. So we are done no, with this uh, bending stress. Okay, so proceeding. So we need to calculate the cracking moment then, which is denoted by this M subscript CR. Okay, so by formula, our cracking moment is just simply equal now to the ratio of your modulus of rupture times your gross moment of inertia over your uh, Y sub T, no? which is our uh, distance no? from the neutral axis. Take note, this is the distance, Y sub T is the distance. Uh, from the neutral axis to the extreme no uh, tension fiber of your rectangular beam okay so we are we are done with this modulus of rupture and this uh, gross moment of inertia so we only need to determine this y sub t so this y sub t is just the this is just the Take note, this is just the centroidal distance, no? Centroidal distance, okay? From the neutral axis, no? From the neutral axis to the 
uh, tension extreme fiber okay of your rectangular beam so this is our neutral axis and this is this one is in compression no? as uh, we, we have discussed no? in our previous slide and this is at the bottom is in tension okay so it's distance from the neutral axis to the tension of the extreme fiber is just equal now to 230 millimeters so we will use here, here the 230 millimeter okay so proceeding now our mcr is just equal now to 3.68 no times our moment of inertia gross of this 0 0.002474 over this uh, 0 0.23 no so we can actually get now the value of your cracking moment which is equal now to 39.58 kilonewton meter okay so as regard now to to the units no so this 3.68 is in megapascal no so you need to to multiply add the uh, multiply this one rather by by 1000 no uh, to make it uh, into kilopascal okay and then afterward so if this is already in kilopascal so this is uh, mm to the fourth no so if this is already in uh, kilopascal so kilopascal kilonewton this is per meter squared times this m to the fourth okay over this uh, meter no so this will be eliminated no and this will equal to squared and then uh, this m and then this will be equal to m so that is why our unit is kilonewton meter no which is our cracking moment so this would be it no for for this problem uh, the cracking moment of the section which is equal now to 39.58 kilonewton meter okay so just remember that this is in megapascal so you need to multiply this one with with 1000 no? uh, to make it into this kilonewton per meter squared okay and now we are going to proceed to our sample problem number two okay if the t-beam shown is uncracked take note no it is uh, uncracked calculate the stress in the concrete at the top and bottom extreme no so we have this top and bottoms extreme fibers okay and still it is uncracked under a positive bending moment of 108 kilonewton meter and if your fc prime is 20.7 megapascal and normal weight concrete is used what is the maximum uniformly distributed load the beam can carry if it is used as a simple beam with 7.32 meter span without exceeding the modulus of rupture of the concrete so take note if you are not exceeding the modulus of rupture of the concrete meaning your beam doesn't experience this crack no or this is uncracked okay so that coincide no with the statement of this problem so we have now this given figure no our bf is equal to 152 centimeter our h subscript f is 13 centimeter and we have now this the width of this web no which is equal now to 31 centimeter okay and proceeding now so as part of our solution we need to locate the neutral axis first no using the barignon's theorem so i hope you are familiar no with this barignon's theorem okay so in locating this neutral axis so we have now this a uh, simple figure no? so we consider this one as our area one here and on the website no it is area two 
and we have now these dimensions here so the formula for this Barignon's theorem is just equal now to this total area times your y bar since uh, we are going to consider no the values of y here to locate now it's a neutral axis and this is just equal now to the summation of your area times y which in this case we we have two areas so we are going to use area one times y one plus area two times y two okay so using this Barignon's theorem so we have now this calculation no, for the total area so 152 times 13 because area 1 is this 152 times the 13 here now on the other side the shorter side and then plus this area 2 which is 31 times 69 okay this is the total area and times this y bar okay and as for this area 1, y1, one, so our area 1 is 152 times 13. So this is 152 times 13. And your y sub 1 here is this. You divide this one with 2, no? To locate now this. To locate now this point here, no? The centroid, no? Of your y of this area 1. Okay? So that is why you are going to divide this 13 by 2, no? Okay? And for the area 2, we have now this 69 times 31 here. And then uh, we have now this 69 divided by 2, no? Since we are considering area 2, so probably we divide this 2 to get now the the centroid no of this one here somewhere somewhere here okay and then we reach our reference uh, axis here the the top the, the top no the top of this uh plectural member and for area one most probably it's a uh, centroid is here and for area two where we we, we will get now its value here no, this is our y subscript 1 no? as to this one. Okay, and for this area 2, so most probably this would be then our no, this is our y subscript 2. So y1 is just simply the, the halves of this 13. No? So that's why we have 13 over 2, and this for the for this y2. We have here 13, no? 13 plus halves of this 69, okay? Plus this 69 over 2. So that is why we have 69 over 2 plus 13. So if you are going to calculate now its value, we have now this y bar equal to 27.81 centimeter, okay? So probably our hf is 13 so the location of our uh, y bar is simply somewhat here no below below this plants no so maybe here okay okay so take note 27.81 centimeter and proceeding calculate the moment of inertia using the transfer access theorem so we already calculate now the y bar which is 27.81 centimeter and which is located now below the below this plants now here and from this we can determine the value of our distance here from the neutral axis now or centroid to the extreme no tension fiber of this uh flexural member which is 54.19 centimeter okay So using now the formula here, the gross moment of inertia equal now to the gross moment of inertia with respect now to x plus this a d squared no, this a d squared. This is a formula no to get this value of our gross moment of inertia. And from here no, 
Uh, we can calculate now the value of our gross moment of inertia. Okay, considering our area 1 and also considering our area 2. So, we have now this values here. Okay, so since uh, the moment of inertia for area 1 is just 1 over 12 times bh cube. So, our B is just 152 centimeter and H is just 13. So, that is why H cube plus this transferred moment no, of inertia denoted by this AD squared. So, area is just this 152 times 13. That is why 152 times 13. And this D is just referring now to the distance, no? the distance of the center of this area 1 to the neutral axis or the centroid. Okay? So, in this case, for our area 1, probably its centroid is here, okay? And we denote this one here as a distance from, from here, no? This is our Y1, okay? And for the area 2, as discussed in our previous slide, so more or less, this is our, our Y subscript 2. But we already found the centroid now, this one which is located 27.81 uh, no? from the top fiber, which is our Y bar. So how to get no? the distance no? of these two? Okay, so we have here So from here from this point so how to get now the distance of this no of this one and this one okay So we need to determine no, the distance and this is our d1 okay Okay so in order to find no this d1 here so we need to subtract no from this y bar which is 27.81 the half of this 13 no which is this 13 over 2 okay to get this d1 okay so 27.81 minus 13 over 2 okay so that is why we have these values here no for the area 1 and for the area 2 here so again, this is uh, 31 times 69. So this is it, no? 31 times 69, h cube here, plus the transferred moment of area, no? Which is 31 times 69 times this uh, d, no? Again, how to get now this value of our d, which is referring now to d2 in our uh, case, no? For area number 2. So we need to find the area here okay so we may use this color no so this is our uh centroid no of the area two okay at this point so how to get no the the distance okay here the distance which is our d subscript two okay how to get this one? So we need to this 54.19 no minus minus this half of your half of your 69 over 2 because after getting your half here so probably you can get no this distance here no you can get this distance no you can get here this is equal now to 69 divided by 2, no? 69 divided by 2. So, after this one, to get this D2 is just 54.19 minus this 69 over 2 here. So, you can get your D2. So, that is why we have these values here, okay? So, after that one, uh, we can get the value of our gross moment of inertia, which is equal now to this value in centimeter to the fourth or in meter to the fourth we have now this value here 
equal now to 0 0.026030092 m to the fourth. Okay. So proceeding now. So we are going to calculate no the stress in the bottom and top fiber under the given moment of 108 kilonewton meter. Since it is being asked here, no, uh, the stress the in the concrete at the top and bottom extreme fiber. So we need to calculate no the stress in the bottom and top. So first we start with the bottom bending stress using this formula of equal to mc over your moment of inertia okay so our m is given here which is 108 and our c take note that our c is just the distance no from the neutral axis from the neutral axis to the extreme tension side of the beam Okay, so in this case our C is just equal now to 54.19 centimeter okay and we have calculated already this I which is equal now to the gross moment of inertia I subscript J no so substituting now so we have now this 108 times this uh, in meter no 0.5419 over this uh, gross moment of inertia and then we can get the value of our stress, no? the bending stress at the bottom of the fiber, which is equal now to 2.25 mega pascal. Okay? So we calculate now the bending stress no? at the top of the extreme fiber using this M times Y bar over this gross moment of inertia, which is equal now to this I. No? So why we are using this Y bar? Because we are uh, considering the top of this uh, of the fiber of this uh, pictorial member and we we did it as our reference no in calculating our y bar so we are going to use the y bar here no because it is now the distance from the top of the fiber to the neutral axis which is we consider the y bar so that is why we consider y bar and when we consider the bottom no here the bottom fiber so we consider this distance no C, which is 54.19 no? in our uh, bottom bending stress. But this time, we consider the bending stress at the top. So, we consider this Y bar here no? instead of our uh, C. Okay? So, substituting now the values. So, we can get the value of our bending strip, no? uh, stress at the top of the top fiber, which is 1.15 megapascal. Okay? And proceeding now, we are going to calculate the maximum uniformly distributed load the beam can carry without exceeding the modulus of rupture, no? as is being indicated here, with a simple a span of 7.32 meter and without exceeding the FR of the concrete. Okay, so from our FR formula of this modulus of rupture, we have this 0.7. And we are using this one this since this is a normal weight concrete no and our fc prime is 20.7 so we can get our fr equal now to 3.8 megapascal and after this one we calculate now the cracking moment no so m subscript cr is just equal now to this fr times gross moment of inertia over this y sub t okay and using now this value so we have now this fr which is 3.18 times 1000 no? since you are going to multiply this one by 1000 to make it into a kilopascal times this this i j which is the gross moment of inertia over this uh, y sub t take note that this y sub t also is the distance no distance no as uh, being uh, introduced in our previous slide as the distance from the centroidal or neutral axis to the extreme uh, tension fiber no of the member so we have now this y sub t equal also to our c which is 54.19 centimeter and then we get now the value of our 
tracking moment of inertia of 152.76 kN meter. Okay? And after that, uh, we are almost done no? since we are after to this uh, maximum uniformly distributed load uh, referring to this uh, small w. And we have this simple uh, beam meaning a simple span. So we are going to use the formula of our simply supported beam. Moment of in, uh, moment is equal now to W is L squared over this 8 no? for a simple span. So, this M is just equal now to our cracking moment, no? And L is given, which is 7.32. And we can actually get now the value of our uniformly distributed load, no? Which is equal now to 22.81 kN per meter, okay? So, this would be it, no? For this uh, sample problem number 2. And... Before we will end this uh, uh, first lecture, no, as part one of the subject reinforced concrete design, uh, you may ask, no, how about if the beam is inverted, no? What are the cracking moment and the uniformly distributed load when the beam is inverted? Okay. So, we will tackle and discuss this one no, in our next lecture video or part of this uh, lecture. And once again, no, I hope you have learned something out of this uh, lecture video of mine with the subject, Reinforced Concrete Design. And these are my references. No? And thank you very much for listening, for watching, and for subscribing also in my YouTube channel. God bless us all and keep safe everyone.